All right. Iron Man 2. There was a pivotal plot device in the story where Tony Stark realizes that the layout of the 1974 Stark Expo is actually a message from his father. It's the diagram of a new yet undiscovered element. Now, no doubt, the, the writers of Iron Man were inspired by this past year's confirmation of a brand new element, because they even talk about trying to make it in the same way. Tony Stark immediately starts to build an accelerator in his basement to synthesize the new element. Now, first of all, how realistic is that? Well, so I'm a high energy physicist and I've seen the components of real accelerators and this doesn't look so bad. And in fact, Michio Kaku, who you might know as a writer of popular science books, uh, he's now a string theorist, uh, he built as a high school science fair project an accelerator in his folks' garage because he said he wanted to play with antimatter. So, although accelerators that high energy physicists use are in fact much larger, the earliest accelerators were garage size, basement size. Uh, maybe that's not so far fetched. He's got big property after all. I think Tony Stark's basement's bigger than mine. Uh, but you also have to worry about the operational expenses. Fermilab's Commonwealth Edison bill runs about 12 or 18 million per year. Oh, but come on, Tony Stark, he's Mr. Moneybags, right? Uh, but you also have to worry about the effect you have on your neighbors. That accelerator is going to need a lot of wattage, and that might interfere with the uh, wattage received by the whole neighborhood. Oh, but come on, Tony Stark, he invented repulsor technology, he developed the arc reactor. I guess maybe in one of his bedrooms he could have put together something that could have powered the thing. All right, so let's not worry so much about that after all. Let's talk about what was the purpose of the accelerator. He wants to synthesize a new element, how's that supposed to work? Well, I got my first lesson in the periodic table from Dr. Solar, Man of the Atom. There was a cool story called uh, Solar's Midas Touch. And the story opens with a disaster in Atom Valley. There was a control rod broke on a reactor. And when, this is Dr. Solar, by the way. In coming to the rescue, he gets an enormous dose of radiation, not unlike the accident that first gave him his powers. And when he leaves later that day, he says, Doctor, I, I, I think I've changed the molecular structure of that door. Uh, caused it to glow. Let's get to the lab and analyze this right away. Just as I thought, Solar, the copper has changed to zinc. You've pushed its atomic number from 29 to 30. What distinguishes the elements in the periodic table are in part the number of protons in their nucleus. As you climb from the lowest end of the periodic table, hydrogen, the simplest element of all, has one proton in its nucleus and in a stable atom, one electron going around it. And as you march across the periodic table, the nuclei all grow with more stuff packed in the middle. Let's try with gold. The number of protons in the nucleus is 79. If you push the atomic number up to 80, you will turn it to mercury sploosh. Now, this came in very handy when he was tracking down the bad guy later in the same story. Because as he caught up to him, as he was trying to escape in a, in a car, high-speed car, train, he, uh, as I keep retouching the changed elements, they continue to change. And it changes the armored car from iron to cobalt to nickel to copper. Copper! This armored car will open like a tin can now. Well, 
Solar already knew how that works, but he was able to do it with his own fingertips. The nuclear physicist has in fact realized the alchemist dreams of transmuting elements from one to another. Uh, it's not very easy to do and it's not cost effective to produce gold this way. But in the early scattering experiments of Rutherford, the experiment that demonstrated that all atoms have a hard nuclear center made up of the protons and neutrons surrounded by the light airy clouds of electrons. Uh, in those same scattering experiments, Rutherford noticed and recorded the first transmutation. He was firing alpha particles coming off of radioactive alpha sources at nitrogen and he got some oxygen out of the collision. Uh, if you prefer, I can redress that alpha as a helium nucleus and the proton as a, remember I said hydrogen simplest atom just has a proton in its nucleus, as a hydrogen nucleus because an alpha particle it turns out is nothing more than the equivalent of a bare helium nucleus. Two protons, two neutrons, they've been simply stripped of the electrons that would ordinarily orbit them in the neutral atom. The trick of these kind of experiments are is you never quite know what you're going to get. There are many things that could happen in the next moment when that cue ball and whatever you do on one try you're probably going to have a very tough time replicating it exactly time after time after time after time. Especially if what you really wanted to do was to send this ball in and have it replace this ball and knock that out and leave the others intact and make a new element that way. Or maybe you want to knock, come this in and just have it to be absorbed and stepped in. And what about the times that that comes in and really just sends everything scattering? In those sorts of experiments, for example here, I can target different nuclei with different projectiles and any of these atoms smashed together could produce any of this long list of possible results. In fact, some of them, like I shoot an alpha at an oxygen atom, and it just ricochets out. Notice that case there? But any of these th could happen. And it's not, and even worse than playing billiards, firing alpha particles at a target and hoping to hit the nucleus in the right corner with just the right spin to make a particular result turn out, that's not possible. So perhaps the most unlikely thing about that scene of Iron Man is the, 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 the assumption that targeting that metal with his beam could uniformly transmute the whole thing into a sample of the new element. For goodness sakes, the American and Russian team of scientists who produced that new element last year of 117, when they did their experiment, which ran for weeks, uh, they only managed to create six atoms of the stuff, but that was enough for them to claim discovery. I still like that movie anyway. And I hope you had fun in the discussion. If you have ideas of other comic book characters, powers, or events that you'd like me to consider the science behind, let me know because I can always add them to new talks that I give on the same subject. So thank you. I could take questions if you have them or you can come up and see me afterwards if you'd like as well.